Hello everyone. So here we are, uh, back with another uh, installment in our ongoing series of Cre uh, Kreutzer Etudes study recommendations and demonstrations. So we are now on to uh, Kreutzer 3, uh, which I am sorry to say is often living in the shadow of its neighbor, the great uh, Kreutzer 2. Um, so why does it live in the shadow of its neighbor? Well, it has uh, very similar uh, fingering patterns, which are these uh, kind of broken scales. Which you see in Kreutzer 2 and Kreutzer 3. And uh, compared to Kreutzer 2, it's, it's a bit shorter and uh, simpler in terms of the fingering pattern. So it's only uh, 17 measures long and it has one uh, scale section going down, then a long scale section going up, and then a long scale section going down, and that's about it. So pretty much only three different fingering patterns to uh, practice. Uh, all that being said, if we look at the original Kreutzer um, editions and also um, the uh, early editions from the uh, teacher Massar, who apparently received some uh, instructions from Kreutzer himself, um, they do recommend doing all of the same variations that we did for two, for uh, Kreutzer number three. So by all means, you are totally welcome to just continue our work with bow division and martelet and energy and um, just treat this as, you know, a little addendum to the variations that we saw in Kreutzer two. It's still in C major, so pretty easy to just tack on uh, 17 more measures. Uh, that being said, uh, some of uh, the teachers who I've been reading about and I've been reading the uh, art of how uh, the book called How to Study Kreutzer by Edith Wynn from the turn of the century and then also um, of course Mimi Zweig who we have been uh, referencing um, as a resource and inspiration for the work that we're doing here. And both of them actually just recommend pretty much dropping all the hundred variations and just focusing on detache and um, letting ourselves have a nice forearm workout in the upper half. And then uh, of course, if we want to go to the lower half, we can do detache as well and loosen up our shoulder and practice the motion of our upper arm. What everybody agrees, however, um, is that this etude gives us a good first introduction to thinking about shifting. And um, as we'll see, the scale patterns give us lots of little shifting um, exercises only by one position and sometimes by two positions. So it's a really good way to integrate uh, our left hand shifting into our detache bow stroke. And um, there are going to be a couple etudes where we talk about shifting in Kreutzer. Number 11 is very famous in the legato with big shifts going all across the violin. And then, of course, when we get to the trill etudes, there's very, very well-timed shifts to match the rhythm of our left hand. But for now, we have the first exposure to shifting in Kreutzer. And um, let's talk a little bit about how we do shifting. So eh, every teacher will probably teach it differently. I'll just talk about how I was taught. When we talk about the basics of shifting, we don't do anything fancy. So we don't do any stretching and catching up, which we might see sometimes in repertoire, um, you know, moving one finger and then letting the arm and the hand come afterwards. We don't do any slides where we might insert a finger part way during the shift and, you know, let that take us into our new note. None of that. Instead, what we really are focusing on are the simplest, most basic mechanics. And this ba mostly comes from the elbow. So what, um, what we are recommended, and if you've ever studied the Yoast shifting exercises as well, those are really, really good for studying this, is that uh, we want to keep two things in mind. The first of all is that when we shift in the lower positions, we're keeping the entire frame of our hand and arm intact, and we just move with the simplest, most relaxed motion of the elbow. When we get up into fourth and fifth positions, we have to be using our uh, wrist and our hand a little bit more, 
But then as soon as we come back to third position, we lock into our beautiful, beautiful, relaxed, um, typical hand um, posture, and then we let our elbow take over. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. The frame of the hand is always constant. Um, and of course we can move our elbow around to get to different strings. The second thing to keep in mind is that we always shift um, with the finger that was just played. And what that means is that if we're going from first to third position, say from a first finger to a, a fourth finger, we always shift with our first finger down. And then we add our fourth finger when we reach our final destination. And the same thing going backwards. If we were to shift from a fourth finger to a first finger in first position, we start with our fourth finger and we shift with our fourth finger down and then we lift. And this ensures that our hand position is remaining constant during the shift. So we call that shifting with, I don't know if there's a name for it, but shifting with the previous finger. And this is really well outlined in the Yoast shifting exercises. Um, but you know, even without some of these uh, stretching tricks or we, we can still really get uh, very beautiful, even almost silent shifts as long as we're timing them really well during our bow changes. And um, that's part of the exercise as well. See if we can get those beautiful shifts uh, timed during the detache bow changes um, and they should be almost silent to the ear. That's about it. So just to recap, for our purposes, we are, let, we are dropping many variations and just focusing on detache we are going to use um, the Boeings, which are written in the Galamian edition, and which were written in Kreutzer's initial edition as well. Maybe for him, they were seeds for the various variations, but for us, we're just going to let them um, play them as they appear, as we play through the etude, which will um, actually encourage us to be very aware of the bow speed. And usually I'm gonna play this with the same amount of bow uh, for every stroke, which means we have to slow down our bow if we're going to um, add multiple notes. And uh, the second thing we focus on, as we mentioned, of course, was shifting. Always just by one or two positions, so nothing crazy, um, but a good time to start loosening up our elbow. In fact, both of our elbows are going to be very, very loose by the end of this A2. So let's play it through. I play it a little bit more slowly, but this is one that you can work up to a decent speed and really work out your arm. Maybe I'll do some in the upper half and maybe I'll stop and go to the lower half so you can see it as well. But pay attention to the shifts and of course our lovely detache that we have practiced already so much in number two. 